perfect. All right, so it's a new day. Uh, yesterday I got the diff put in. So I think I'm not low enough for those upper arms to take a huge effect. So I think they're actually putting a bit of pressure on things they shouldn't. So hmm, maybe a great excuse to lower it further, but we'll see what the front looks like. Because we've got to have it even. Anyway, other than that, uh, my dad went to my mate's place and picked up my booster because he was on the north side. So this is a R33 booster dual diaphragm. And as you can see, it holds the R32 master upright instead of on a 45 degree angle. So got to install that today. Got to hook up the third brake line for the diff to the body and doesn't look very good. What else do I need to do? It kind of looks bent. Anyway, um, bleed the brakes, put the front wheels on, put the tail shaft in, fill them with fluid, the gearbox and the diff, and then take it for a test. So we're almost there. All right, so I got the four bolts out of my stupid brake master up there. Ignore the bird's nest of wires and blue lights. I didn't put them in and I'm too lazy to fix them. So now this old girl should just straight out like that. Hopefully this strap brace isn't too much in the way. More like brake lines. This might be a two-handed job, so stand by. This sucks. So I think what I'm going to do is take that little extension bit off. We'll just fold that down in the hole. But either way, I need to put the phone down. So you get the idea. Pull that out, cram the other one in, and do it when your engine's out. It makes life easier. All right, once you get them out, you see them next to each other. The depth isn't a huge change. Oh, where's the focus? So that one's a little bit deeper. But the uh, vacuum line ports are in the same spot. It's just the uh, studs on the front are different. The depth of that push rod is different. And this one's got a double diaphragm. That one's only got a single. The pattern at the back's still the same with the same thread size. But these um, mounting thingies are slightly different. Now the um, connections to the connections to the pedal are slightly different. Different shape, pretty much the same width though, which is good. Take my word for it, they're the same width. Anyway, I'll just check the pin size, make sure there's no gasket on the firewall, and then I'll um, pull the boost uh, master off and throw this one in. I'll pull this off on there as well. But uh, yeah, they look pretty good otherwise. Looks like it'll be a straight bolt-on affair. And there we have it. Just be nice and careful putting it in. And it just slots right down in there. Just got to throw some bolts on the inside and the master on the outside. And reroute my brake lines that Luke did the other day for me so that they all line up properly. They'll be pretty close, but um, just make sure you don't pinch any wires. Like I've got a vacuum line run behind here that's still free, so that's good. And tuck those out of the way a little bit now. And, uh, and yeah, we're off and racing. So the only change with this um, this master is that the low brake fluid warning light won't work because it's the wrong terminal. I'll try and change it in the future, but for now, I will just be extra vigilant with my brake fluid level. All right, so boost is in, master's in. I ended up reusing this bracket down here with just one bolt, so it holds it fairly well. Just got to tighten up this hose clamp down here, but that all fits. My wiring clears everything. This one's just sitting down here doing nothing. Just keeping its head down. Uh, it looks like the brake lines are going to be a bit more of a stretch so obviously Luke adjusted them to suit uh, as it was tilted over and we cut this short I had it on like a 90 down there so I might have to get them to Bailey's brake and clutch to remake a 90 for that so that these lines reach a little nicer because this one looks like it's gonna be a bit of a stretch anyway I need to um, I need to reflare this one so that it's a double flare not a single flare and that's the rears going in here and then the fronts go in there now these are this is the um, BMC stopper. So this is the new style one that Arvin made or RB Factory made. And if you have it all the way at the front of the slides, it touches on there. So that will probably work and you can tighten them up and you don't have to run this little pad or anything like that. But I have the old style one here too, which doesn't, I don't know. We'll see if that will work. So I think it might space it back just enough that we can still have the little foot on it. So I'm gonna give that a try and see how it sits. All right, so you can see the old style still allows you to get the foot on there and run it, whereas the new style, this section is hard up against, or pretty damn close to the, the master. So, yeah, I don't know if RB Factory is going to make one specific for this, but there's your workaround if you're lucky enough to have the old one. So it's been raining a ridiculous amount. You can see there's some clouds hanging around. So last night it practically flash flooded in our backyard. All underneath the house is full of parts and it all got washed away, so that's great. And today Brisbane had a bit of flash flooding as well, so progress has been exceptionally slow on this old thing, <clears throat> but the um, 
brake booster's in, that's in, the master's in, the BMC stopper's in with the, probably needed that, with the, uh, the foot thing on it. So now, just got to sort out these brake lines, so I need to re-flare this one and get it into this hole and then get the other two into those. Luke and I shortened this, it was on a 90 down to here, so that may bite us in the ass. I might have to get another 90 made up. Costs like two dollars, but yeah, anyway. Um, see how we go. So I'm just going to keep plodding away, hopefully get the brakes sorted out today and get the handbrake done today, get the tail shaft in and then I might get a friend around to help me bleed up the brakes if it dries out enough I can get under there and yeah, it's just about it. Put the sway bar back in, put the drive shaft in, fill it with fluids and it's done pretty much. Just got to check everything works after that. Alright, so <clears throat> when you're putting the uh, 32, 33 or whatever brake master cylinder on, they have double flare fittings, whereas the R31 stuff only has single flare. So what I've done is got a double flare line here and then into a single flare here and this whole distribution block is single flare. So the two front lines go straight into that and it's all single flare. So I don't have to modify any of that. This, however, the rear line goes straight into the rear fitting and this is a double flare. So now I need to make this a double flare. So because it's already a single flare, it looks like this, where it's just been squished once then um, I just get this tool here, clamp it on and screw this one down and it will like push in the center. Actually, if we look at this, let me just show you quickly. So it will complete this second function here where it squishes the uh, line back in on top of itself. So that's a double flare, whereas that is only a single flare using the uh, flaring tool. So I'm just gonna do that quickly and then bend up the rest of this line to get it to fit into this here. I also had to run it on the other side so that the outside of the steering column instead of on the inside of the steering column. So just gotta make sure it's not gonna touch anything and it should be sweet. All right, so this is what the double flare turned out like, if you can see it at all. Come on. Anyway, that's what it's meant to look like. So it looks like absolute garbage. I don't know why. Probably the angle, probably the material. Probably I'm shit. Anyway, I'm just gonna throw it in. See if it leaks. If it does, I'll take it down to a brake shop, get them to cut it off and do another one or something like that. Because that sucks. But we shall see how it turns out. It might fit just fine. It might leak like a sieve. We shall see. Alright, so the brake lines are all done. Not the prettiest thing ever, but it'll do for now. I'll get them dialed in another time. Maybe I'll get a booster with the correct number of fittings instead of running this T-block. But anyway, it'll do for now. That's in. Just got to put my fuel filter back in place because it made it easier to get around to tighten up that stupid double flare thing. Ugh. Anyway, there's that, there's that. All right, so last brake line we gotta do is the one, uh, but from the body to the diff. All right, so yesterday afternoon, I couldn't get the uh, master to bleed up the front brakes. I disconnected them at the master and nothing was coming out. So the mask was pretty dirty. I didn't really want to pull it apart, but I had to. So the hardest part is getting these bits out. So they just yank straight up. Uh, you don't have to remove them. The way that you actually disassemble the master is there's one screw here. And then on the other side, there's like a little, it's like got four claws that hook in. You just pry them off, pop it out, try not to damage it. And then the piston will come out. If you can't pull it out or it doesn't fall out, give it a shake or maybe put some compressed air through one of the ports and it will shoot out, but be careful because it'll go a long way. I just cleaned everything. I couldn't quite get the piston from this end out and I also couldn't get the piston from that end out, but I was able to blow through all the cavities with um, brake clean. So I'm happy with how clean it is. I threw everything back together yesterday and then bolted it all back on the car. So i would run out of brake fluid because we used it all yesterday. So got some fresh dot three from, uh, what's the name? Stupid, super cheap. Now we'll throw that in. I've got transmission fluid, throw that in. So once the master cylinder works, I can bleed up the front brakes throw the transmission fluid into the transmission and then the car and then spanner check the whole thing because I've been putting stuff in and then it started raining I've just thrown tools away and, and packed it up so like half of the bolts that I've done up are loose which is something I never ever do and it's really annoying me so you go through spanner check every single part of the car regardless of if I've touched it or not just to make sure that nothing's going to fall out on me because it's nothing worse than driving down the highway and a suspension control arm falls out or something so I'm going to go run through do that and then uh, the car's done put it on the ground take it for a test drive eyeball the wheel alignment, you know, see if I can get some Ks on it. And then on Wednesday, so today's Monday, so Wednesday gets air conditioning regas as well as a wheel alignment. So the wheel alignment will be interesting. I'm gonna try and dial it in as best I can. And the aircon regas, I just hope that the new condenser is good. It held gas prior to me installing this 
pipe and bending the shit out of it that you saw in a prior video. But we'll give that a whirl and see what happens. So I'm just going to put fluid in here now and see if we get some coming out. All right, so I've got to pull this stupid thing apart again. So these are the tabs I was talking about. There's four of them. Just prime back gently and then this cap comes off. The piston should just come straight out. This one's just a big ass Allen key. And then you need a little bit of air pressure in there to kick pistons out if necessary. So from what I can figure, there's four pistons in this thing. So there's one at this end, one at this end on this big shaft. And then there's one here for this one and one here for this one. So you can see one of them in there, maybe too bright anyway just take my word for it i think that's how they work um so when i took it apart last time i got these two out and then i got this piston out now this piston doesn't want to come out which is great uh but this piston in here didn't come out and i just didn't bother with it because i figured there was like this pin or something holding in anyway this time around i didn't take this end off because there's a passage that goes from here through to here and i just put um brake clean straight into this hole and pressurized it because the the little tip I have is about the same size as it. And I heard a click, like a piston moving, and I felt it. And so now I can put brake clean in there and push the piston and it squirts fluid out. So I'm banking that that was just a stuck piston because this has been sitting on my bench for six years. So who knows how long it's been sitting on someone else's bench. So I think that there was just a stuck piston in there. All the other um, gaskets or whatever O-rings looked all right in here. So I'm not too worried that that one might have a dead O-ring or anything. I think it was just stuck. So now that one's unstuck. This one's always been unstuck, but I'll double check it anyway. Uh, I'm just going to throw this cap back in and um, stick it back on the car and see what happens. Well, I uh, had to go back in and pull this piston out. So I hit it with a little bit of compressed air. I got the first piston out, no worries. That's what it looks like. And then the second piston needed a little bit more air. And I had it pointed down here into the, the bucket. Here's the O-ring. So I think that this was just a little bit stuck. But it came out. And the piston came out too. I heard it ricochet out of here. The O-ring landed over there somewhere. And then I heard the piston probably ricochet off the top of that car somewhere. And everything on the other side is like parts and grass. So I have no idea where that went. And I doubt I'll ever find it. So that means that this is now useless. So I'm going to have to find a new BM50 master cylinder. And I've got to get the car wheel aligned on Wednesday. So it's Monday now. So pretty sure these are JDM only things, so we'll see how we go chasing one down. I think it's going to be kind of expensive for a new one, and I don't know that I'll get a second-hand one very easily. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Let's get to it. 